Friends and family, it is a Pride Month miracle here at Progress America Unfiltered. Today I'm here with Craig, Tyler, and Linda because Donald Trump has been arraigned. And before I get too far into it, I'm going to pass it over to Craig because Craig is my source when it comes to explaining things to me. Craig is going to tell us a little bit about these documents, where they were kept, and why the hell they were in Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago sanctuary. Craig, what can you tell us? Sanctuary is a great way to say bathroom, um, which I think is one of the many hilarious facts. And also, Red, I just got to say, you got to get a better source of information than me. I just, I just, we got, we got to start there. But, anyways, for this one, I do think it's hilarious because one of my pastimes is just enjoying the, the, the one truth of humanity, and that we're all idiots. And so, like, the good guys are idiots, the bad guys are idiots, and the idiots are idiots. So here's a case with Donald Trump being an idiot and how not to be a bad guy. So Donald Trump, um, unlike everybody else, uh, and this is the part where it's everybody else, but he took documents from his presidency, as one does, and had them there because it was his uh, summer White House. mar lago was his summer White House, and he was allowed to have those documents there up until his presidency ended and then he was not and what usually happens during this process is that the national archives goes through and is like all right what are we missing and then they work with the presidential administration's vice presidents to sort of retrieve those documents and oftentimes it's a relatively uh, menial task done by a random lawyer who gets unceremoniously uh, assigned the task to sort through these documents well donald trump isn't your normal ex-president is he no he has thoughts and opinions about what he's allowed to do rather than sort of following the rules that everybody else does and so long and sort of short of it his in my opinion this is very my opinion i'll go back to the fact part but in my opinion his narcissism got such the good of him that he kept a box of code name and need to know only secret classified documents all very important for national security you know like nuclear weapons plans to invade a whole host of countries including iran and so when uh, the government went to go get these blood documents he was like yeah yeah we gave them all to you and then the government was like ah no no you didn't and they were like can we have them back now no seriously and they're like and he was like yeah 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 and they kept moving these documents and then this is the this is the hilarious part is that they got him on tape moving the documents because he knew he shouldn't have them. And so there are multiple instances where they have him <laughs> recorded audio because lawyers take notes, uh, basically saying, well, when when the lawyer was asking me which boxes should we give back, you know, blah, 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 they want this, you got to approve this. And he's like, well, what if we just don't? And so the, the call ends, and that's funny. That's where they end up with it. And so you see them, then they raid FBI and stuff. And what the fun part was of all of this is that moving the documents is to avoid getting them taken back by the National Archives is, is a bad thing in general. But the fact that he was also caught on tape, caught on tape because he has a problem with talking about himself caught on tape talking to Mark Meadows biographer and basically Mark Meadows his chief former chief of staff biographer was there with a with the live tape you know that the, the police did not have to do warrants they, there was no tapping there's no tapping of phones here the hilarious thing no 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 they got a they got essentially an audio tape of his biography being shown top secret plans to invade Iran that Trump was using to make a rhetorical point about why General Miley, who had gone on to Fox News and several other news agencies and was, a, I forget his exact position, was high up in his uh, general staff, um, was wrong because he had this plan that he was drawn up by General Miley and he showed it to Mark Meadows' biographer. Now, this plan is, to show it to somebody who doesn't have the proper clearance is so many different ways of illegal. Not only are you violating many of the uh, kind of classification laws, but here's the best part. This entire argument about whether or not he can declassify materials doesn't matter. Because there's a law that says 
if it is important to national security, regardless if it's classified or not, it is a protected document that you cannot share with the public. So regardless if it's classified or not, it's still illegal to show people this document. And he did to a person he should know is likely having a live wire on because it's a biographer whose only purpose there is to take and record the conversations so that they can put it into a narrative published book that everybody can read. And so he may be the dumbest criminal of all time, which is not a great defense because he knew about it. He's on tape saying he knew about it. He's on tape implying he's showing them the document, which we still don't have. That's the other best part about it. We still don't have the document. He still haven't given it back. We still don't know where that plan is. It's uh, it's just really a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. Masterpiece of something. Of something. <laughs> Greg, thank you for that <laughs> comprehensive overview of Trump's just like lackluster criminal behavior and method. Like he just does not understand what he's, I mean, I don't even know. I can't even explain this. Linda, please help me out here. What's going on? No, so I think it's really hard to figure out what's going on precisely because it just is all so dumb. Like my initial reaction when I saw that Trump had retained secret documents is that he definitely was selling them to a foreign adversary, whether it be China, Russia, Iran. And I think that that's still entirely possible. Like Definitely, we all should be keeping an eye on the massive amount of money that Saudi Arabia gave to Jared Kushner. But at the same time, like he could just be so dumb that he just took the boxes because he wanted the boxes and he's showing them off to people because he thinks that it makes them look important. And he's obstructing the FBI at getting him back just because he is that stupid and stubborn. But I also think just what's so fascinating to watch is how much other Republicans have had to defend this. Like Kevin McCarthy saying it's okay because the bathroom door has a lock on it. Um, like, my goodness, they're just completely tying themselves in knots. Even the president, his rivals in the Republican presidential primary, the folks who are supposed to be making the case that you should be voting for them and not Donald Trump for president are mostly going out of their way to defend this as well. So I think it's really it telling too, <laughs> Linda, mm -hmm. who in the Republican party, because you notice senators have kept their mouth shit, shut. They have not commented on this largely. It's mostly House members who have. And it's like, even then, after they read the indictment when it was unsealed, they were like, oh, oh. oh. And I think it's really telling. I had a buddy who basically replaced Trump's name and all the indictment documents with Biden's name and then gave him to his very Republican friends. And they were all like, oh, jazzed about it. They're reading them. They're just like, this guy's guilty of sin. And then he told them that it's actually Trump. This is Trump's indictment. And they were like, oh, no. They, they're just, they're, so they just, their, their minds broke. These folks thought that Joe Biden was keeping documents yeah, in his Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because the Republicans have done such a great job of, like, trying to obfuscate, like, what has happened with other past presidents. Because, you know, the National Archives have had to ask Biden, Hillary Clinton, Kamala Harris, Obama, for their documents back because presidents produce an insane amount of documents. They get to keep some. They don't get to keep a lot of it. And there are agreements whether or not they can borrow the documents. But like every time the National Archives goes to those people, they're like, yeah, here you go. Sure. Like, let's run. Like Biden, when he found some documents he shouldn't have, voluntarily ran more searches in the rest of his residence and produce them for the National Archives and said the National Archives are having to come ask for them. And that's the thing. It's like the National Archives did ask for them multiple times. And we're like, hey, can we just have them back? Can we just have them back? Can we just have them back? And Trump was like, no, let's move them. Let's move them. Because it wasn't always in a bathroom. They were in a ballroom table at one point, like an office table. Like the only reason they were moved into the bathroom is because on staff, they basically flipped um, they flipped this staffer that was helping him manage all of his affairs, his, his assistant, essentially. And they have a bunch of text messages. They had moved him because the staffers wanted to use that ballroom as an office into the bathroom. 
Like there's there's like stupid stuff about intent, like where Trump tells the staffer to change the box lids where it's all identified as secret content so that it's no longer identified as secret content just to hide off it shows intent it's like so hard to improve like prove intent on these laws because you have to show actual malice but like when you're so stupid that you say this shit on recorded items and your guys just texting other people this like blatant information it's just like you, i mean if you try sure it's gonna happen it's gonna be that dumb Right. Yeah, and I want to bring Tyler in on this conversation as well because, you know, like this story is jaw dropping in so many ways, but it also kind of reaches in what I believe is the baseline level of corruption for Donald Trump. And like, you know, like you could have told me this story, and like, is it awful for sure? Is it surprising? Not really. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. That's Republic- the funny part. It's not surprising at all, right? Like this seems like. Like, it, like, totally checks out. Like, none of us believe that this didn't happen. This, like, totally happened. Even, like, like Kevin McCarthy, like, saying, oh, it was in a locked bathroom, whatever. He's not saying it didn't happen. Like, this is bad stuff for sure. So, Tyler, I want to bring you in here for your reaction on this in, like, many ways. It's just, like, are the Republicans ever going to, like, get away from, like, siding with Trump on this thing? Like, how do you think this is going to play out, like, specifically as we look to 24? I think the short answer is no. I think that, you know, it is very clear that he has no intent, Donald Trump has no intent to step down from his presidential candidacy. Um, Fun fact, there's nothing that says you can't, you know, run for president from jail. So there's a chance that he could do that. Um, Eugene by the way, just for the fun fact. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And it's very clear that what happens is Republicans and right-wing legislators and talking heads continue to move the goalposts on what they find egregious, and they will move it in direct proportion to whatever Trump has recently been accused of. And that's just what it is. We don't need to act surprised that they're not surprised. I'm not surprised. Um, there was even, I'll see if I can find it and get our producer Brad to like pop it up, but there was like a Fox News Chiron that like went up um, about this indictment. And it was like, uh, sitting President Biden uses his power to attack political enemy Trump. And it's like, they will take this stuff and spin it any way that suits them. Like, Obviously, President Biden was not in his office, like, tinkering on his own um, to, yeah, want to be dictator Trump. The special uh, counsel did this. That's the whole point. Exactly. So they're making it seem like all of this is coordinated attacks or, you know, fishing for stuff when, in fact, it's just simply the consequences of Trump's actions. And that's all it is. And to be honest, I'm, I'm a little, I'm the most, I think, detached from all of this because I just think that we need to see these things play out. But I think when we feed into the frenzy of, oh my God, can you believe he did this? Like at this point, I believe everything. I believe what we have the proof for. And I think that there is no low that they can sink to that will not surprise me, except for the fact that Donald Trump did show the documents to Kid Rock. That was pretty, pretty surprising (laughs) to me of all. That was the one aspect of this story that surprised me. Everything else I completely believe. But Kid Rock, of all people... It just okay, shows the narcissism. Story. He's like uh, he's like a twelve year old boy in a yeah, showing it to your, your best friend. Body, you know, he's just like, oh, but, dude, yeah. you see this? Ha ha ha! It's like beams of day, in real life. Exactly. By the end of the day, I think it's important for Democrats. Let's skip the shock. You know, if we're going through the twelve stages of grief or whatever when we're talking about the end of our democracy, let's skip the surprise. Let's skip the denial. Let's go straight to the anger. Let's go straight to the you know, uh, deal making and let's go straight to the action part where we make sure he's held accountable and doesn't get to keep spinning this and spinning this like a snake that constantly sheds its skin. And that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, I would just add if I were Democrats, you know, I would really focus on calling him a traitor and just focusing on the fact that even though we don't know yet specifically if Donald Trump sold or attempted to sell these secrets to other countries, it's certainly the case that any Russian or Chinese spy who wandered into Mar-a-Lago and decided to go to the bathroom most certainly could have learned all of our secrets. And so, you know, if Which, I were by the Democrats, the way, they are yes. known to surveil. They're known to buy memberships too. And there were thousands of people who went through that hotel while they were in the bathroom. Like, could? No, no, no. We should assume sh- did. That that definitely did happen. And it was like, that spy's easiest day. They were like. Oh, 
man, everybody told me it was easy, like hard to get American nuclear secrets. I just, this, this bathroom right here has them all. Hold on. I can't, you know what? In fact, you know, it'd be hilarious. There needs to be like a Guy Ritchie movie or something where like they go into the bathroom and then like they just don't believe those are the actual secrets because they're like, there's no way. There's no way. They're not this dumb, right? So they just ignore them, but they're the actual secrets. I just like, wonder what Trump's relationship with bathrooms is. Like, we all remember, like, the gold toilet. Like, why is <laughs> Him he... and toilets, too? Yeah, like, what is up with that? Like, honestly, it is so foul. Like, why Why does he... What is this I don't association know, with right? him and bathrooms? And with that, I'm like, what else can we say on this issue? Is there anything Nothing. you all want to say before we close out? Because, like, I think I need a nap after this one. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say I am so grateful that we somehow got through four years of this man being in the White House without him accidentally launching a nuclear war and getting us all killed. Um, I'm not confident that that will happen again. So if you're watching this, please don't vote for him. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> couldn't Anybody have, couldn't else, have said please. it better myself, Linda. That's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Everybody, please make sure you're registered to vote. Check the voter registration. It is never too early. And Linda, Craig, Tyler, thank you all oh, so much for joining below. today. We'll provide a vote.org link below. Oh, yeah, for sure. We'll put a vote.org link in the description, as well as some sources to back up this discussion. You guys have got to see this video about Kid Rock talking about <laughs> these documents. It's unbelievable. But thank you all so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Have a great day. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we will see you soon. Bye-bye.